Hello Aries and welcome to your April forecast. Hope you guys are doing fantastic and uh, as always you can use this for your rising sun and moon signs. This month we'll be entering into a retrograde cycle and for every sign I wanted to channel some information of possibility uh, because a lot of times we end up going into that sort of do not list and instead this month I wanted you to go into the uh, opportunity, miracle, or do list rather. So for you, your channeled information is to reimagine. And um, I mean, imagine's enough, but sometimes we, we think we know what we want. I want you to go a few steps into that and think of sort of that dreaming phase that you did when you were a kid where um, maybe every week you would change your mind at what you wanted to do when you grow up. Somehow when we become an adult though, <clears throat> we feel like whatever we are, or whatever we've become is the only thing that we can do in our life and that's not true at any age whether you're you know 10 16 24 55 80 um, it doesn't matter you can always sort of look at your life and and change it change it to be something more than you want something more than people think you can do that's often the most um, rewarding part of life is surprising people right so I want you to surprise yourself and think of what it is that you can do, who you are. Um, so I want you to reimagine yourself and reimagine your future. Okay, let's go ahead and shuffle the cards for this month. For those of you that are coming back, I just wanna say thank you, welcome again. And for the new folks, uh, the way I organize the reading is to go ahead and pull a full spread for the month and then I'll expand the forecast or extend it out to include health, wealth, love, and destiny as well. Uh, that allows me really to, to look at the main energy of the month without having to worry about hitting all of those areas because sometimes, you know, there's just one focal point for the energy in the month. But um, anyway, enough talking. Let's see what the cards have to say. And pull one additional card here, which is going to be your catalyst. And for me, the catalyst signifies um, your overarching energy, sort of like what's tying everything together. It's, it's the main card, if you will. I usually use a different deck for that. And uh, for this one, it's about grounding. We have this card that says the tree, it was reversed. So finding grounding, finding the ability to feel like you are, uh, you're safe, you're protected. I feel like uh, the very last two weeks of the month, I actually like the second to last week is when you're gonna need to practice this. So for those of you that meditate, fantastic. Um, I want you to focus on maybe using a darker colored stone like uh, obsidian or onyx or anything that feels good to you, even just taking a stone from outside and focus on feeling like you're part of the earth, feeling like your energy is, um, is also grounded because a lot of times we, we have too much energy sort of going on uh, in our subtle body. So this is more about focusing and feeling like you're in control. All right, let's look at the cards now and uh, we'll make sense of everything for this month. Your central card is the Hermit. The Hermit's reversed. Um, two things on this. I feel like you've spent a lot of time doing introspective things over maybe the past couple of weeks. And there may be sort of a desire for many of you just to stay, like keep to yourself this month. And I even see that here when I'm looking at sort of your ego and and leading into your environment, there's a, there's a sense of wanting to pull back from friends because we have the Three of Cups in reverse. So the Hermit card reverse, the Three of Cups reverse. And the only sort of thing that I see that could be negative about this is you're going to be missing out on opportunities for other people uh, to recognize you. Uh, you could be blending in too much. So for those of you that needed a break, take that break. But I really think around the 6th, 7th, or 8th of the month, this is going to be your chance to come out of your shell and, uh, and really show your, your true colors, whatever it is that you've been wanting to sort of like express. Um, it will be okay. We have the sun in reverse here. So there's a lot of muted energy here when it comes to expressiveness, um, communication, even the ability to sort of like not be seen. So. I think what some of you need to do uh, over the first week of the month is focus on what's important to you. What, I mean, part of the reason you're going into this introspective cycle is you might have been spreading yourself too thin. A lot of times when I see the Seven of Cups, it shows me someone that is really good at multitasking, really apt at um, pulling in a lot of good opportunities, but 
sometimes has trouble saying no or pushing back when they're feeling overwhelmed. So uh, one thing that you can do to allow yourself to be a little bit more social, a little bit more open for other people's energy is to sometimes just say no to um, if you're feeling overloaded at work, if you're in one too many activities. And uh, basically once you recuperate your your own personal reserve of energy and also once you focus on only two or three things rather than you know half a dozen suddenly you're going to be able to come out of your shell a little bit you're going to feel uh, more like you're part of the world but what happens is if we're spreading ourselves thin if we're helping everybody at the end of the day we just want to like not even sometimes watch the TV just go to bed and so I need you to sort of reset and uh, and allow for yourself to have more to give now, if you are someone who doesn't need a lot of rest and uh, you love being busy, this card is saying no problem with that, but there's still going to be um, a trade-off when it comes to your effectiveness on doing everything. So if there's one or two things that need your attention, just prioritize those and you can still lead a very active and busy life. Okay, enough said with that. Uh, one last thing though, actually, with the Hermit card. Uh, it is a great time for spiritual growth. That is one of the, the things that I see with that. Also, it's leading into the, the Hierophant, which shows me, again, meditation can be a great sense of stability for you, a great place to go and find that quiet space. Um, looks like emotions are, uh, it's kind of split. Between the beginning of the month, there is either something that's triggering you emotionally, perhaps to be angry or sad, but I feel like that's, temporary and when we look at the middle of to the end of the month there's new love opportunities your emotional sort of like uh, baseline is stabilized and you're ready for um, to love and be loved so great opportunities coming towards the the latter part of the month but the beginning's tricky and I think that's why you're pulling back uh, for some of you there's a controlling influence that I'm seeing in your periphery and it's around the second and third week of the month uh, we have the Empress card in reverse. A lot of times this can be a really controlling mother or aunt. It can also be a boss that comes in and demands quite a bit from you. It doesn't always have to be a woman. Uh, basically what's important here is it's, it's a theme of control and it's usually like the reverse of nurturing. It's needing. Needing and sometimes not recognizing that you um, are powerful. Um, this person will will sort of like thrive on a codependent relationship or somehow plant the seed that you need them when in fact you're perfectly self-sufficient and so this card is about you owning your own independence and your own ability to sort of feel like hey I got this under control so um, if there is someone in your life that's pulling that self-confidence that you normally have just take a step back take a deep breath and realize that's one perspective. And also if you spend too much time around that person, uh, or because we have these very sort of controlling cards, the Hierophant, the Hermit, and this pulling back from socializing, for some of you, that could be, could be, uh, that could be sort of based on this person's demands. Either they want too much of your time or they make you feel guilty for going out. Sometimes when you're around um, either a narcissist or a person that just is, like I said, codependent or very demanding. They'll make you feel guilty when you have um, social life or uh, things that are going on in your life that are healthy and normal for most people. So don't feel bad. That's a, that's a part of being an independent person. So whether you're uh, you know, a daughter, a son, a sister, and someone in your life is like a blood relative and they make you feel bad for just having fun, uh, as long as you're getting everything else done in your life, that's your thing. So um, don't let anyone else kind of like pull back or mute your flame or your light. Um, the other thing that I see here, again, there's some very strong personalities around you this month. This one comes through as more masculine. Typically when I read for um, people and I get the sun reversed, it has to do with a loved one or a like um, a husband or a, a son or a brother uh, who are very sort of used to shining, used to getting the limelight and require a lot from um, the women or men in their life. So um, be careful, I would say, both with this strong feminine influence and this strong masculine influence. Um, it seems like you got a lot of people pulling from you. The, I will say normally the sun is younger um, and the empress is older, if that helps you. 
Um, this is typically someone 50 plus. It doesn't have to be. It can be someone who just acts old and acts superior. Um, and this one is someone who, despite their age, acts immature. So you've got two sort of very different people in your life that could be causing um, some stress. This can also be an aspect of your personality where you're either having to conjure up um, being bossier than you like or you're having some tendencies to to kind of like pull in and say like I need this so um, there's nothing wrong with either extreme but I want to pull you more in the center so that you're not polarized or split um, when it comes to money this month I would say be careful um, not like to worry about it but it looks like uh, what's what's going to be going on towards the very end of the month is you may have some unexpected costs it may be a little bit harder to make money or hold on to money this month and for those of you that are job searching the very last week of the month is probably not the best time so I would do it much sooner in the month if you're trying to to look for work or trying to make a purchase or do something like that I mean the first week is the best I think until we come out of the, the retrograde so either that or wait until the middle of next month um, but overall this is a month to budget, to save, not to spend, and not to take any risks when it comes to um, investments, gambling, etc. So just be, just be wise, just be careful, and don't be discouraged if you're having difficulty pushing in that area. The one area that I see improvement is relationships and love. So there's always um, a little bit of give and take with the energy of the, each month. So opportunities, money, and material stuff, a little harder to reach. Um, emotional stability, love, and uh, general happiness seems like it's more within reach and to me that's not a bad trade-off the other thing like I said is there's a lot going on this month so just try not to get overwhelmed so let's expand the, for, uh, the forecast to look at uh, health first and with health we're looking at your mind body and spirit because really I don't believe that any of those exist within a vacuum they all feed into one another so we have this card here that says helpless and hopeless the card is reversed that's a positive thing uh, what I'm seeing here and I did see a lot of sort of like up and downs with the energy so I love this because you see all these beautiful sort of steps here and take it a, take it a step at a time and a day at a time it's interesting that um, it looks like the eighth which I have to look at the um, let's see I, I printed it out here but I think the retrograde cycle starts right on the ninth um, so um, yeah the eighth could be a transitional day for you and one where you're sort of facing your fears. Um, remember, again, with this in reverse, you may be focusing more on the negative than the positive on that day, so my challenge for you is to realize that you're actually at a crossroad. Um, this is almost like a beautiful reinterpretation of two swords where the person is usually blindfolded and, and is at a sort of like decision point where they don't know where to go. This one, it's sort of feeling like I, I, you're not ready or you are unsure of the outcome, whatever you do is going to be okay. That's my message here. So just, you have to sometimes act on the information you have and don't second guess yourself. Um, what does this have to do with your health? Taking the first step towards improvement. So if you've had issues with uh, mobility, aches and pains, maybe um, you're not happy with the way your body looks or feels. This is about taking a very small step each day towards improvement, not expecting to get to the horizon without a little bit of work, okay? So by the eighth, go ahead and put your first foot forward and, and decide like, I'm going to drink more water this month. I'm going to meditate a little bit more. I'm going to um, see the doctor about the aches and pains that I've been feeling, whatever it is. Talk to someone for help. It's all there, it's within reach but um, try not to go too much past the eighth on taking your first step. Let's take a look at wealth and career. So for your wealth card this month, we have rescue. And this card seems like it makes sense to me um, because the, uh, the Knight of Pentacles in reverse, we're looking at around the 16th of the month Again, it's a reversal. I'm not worried about reversals this month because we have a retrograde, so everything's going to sort of have that, um, you know, potential energy of not being completely clear. So <clears throat> what I like, sorry, about the rescue card here is there is growth even within loss or within isolation. So 
don't feel like you're alone. Um, if you are, if you don't have a lot of people to talk to, this is showing me that you're, you're going to be able to innovate or discover a way out of it. But you may just have to look further than you thought for a solution. Um, it could be this sort of really far out or unusual way of getting um, assistance. So for those of you that are like perhaps trying to go to a certain college, look for the unusual, um, uh, what, what do you call the uh, financial aid, not just financial aid, but scholarships. So there could be a, a strange scholarship opportunity that you never thought you, uh, remember we've got reimagine, would be eligible for. So go for it. Um, could be the same sort of thing like if you're an edu uh, another type of education looking for a grant or a fellowship, um, looking for a first time loan for a house. Try something unusual when it comes to your money. You're going to have to really think outside of the box. And I do think there's going to be, you're going to need external assistance for this. So don't be afraid to talk to uh, an accountant, a lawyer, a friend who's really knowledgeable about money uh, and get some advice. So around the 15th, 16th of the month, that's when you're going to have to put on your thinking cap and try um, some unusual solutions when it comes to your money opportunities. So we just looked at health and wealth. Now we're going to take a look at love. And this includes all your relationships, but we got two for you, so I'm going to read both. The first one says, act as if your partner is here. Whether you have something in your life or not, act as if they are with you and, uh, and you will always consider them. So gently what this card is saying is, uh, particularly when it comes to someone who, uh, again, this can be an aspect of your personality or just a person that really ends up thinking of themselves a lot. Um, two sides to this. If your partner's not providing that for you, remind them of this. Like say, listen, I'm always thinking of you. It would be great sometimes if you could take into account how this affects me. Um, and you can say it in a way that doesn't sound so, so sort of prescribed. You could say instead, I really like it when you ask, you know, what I want to do for dinner, or, you know, or if I've, if I have plans, because in that way we can make them together. So you can you can put it in that sort of language. Um, and likewise, if you've just been really busy, this is a, a little nudge to you to think about your partner and maybe start the conversation off with, how are you doing? Rather than, oh my God, I had the craziest day. So start off with um, extending the olive branch and seeing where they are, and then let them know maybe that you need support too. The second card that you got uh, in regards to relationships is to get to know each other. <clears throat> and so this card is really about setting aside that time, even if it's just, you know, eating breakfast together or, you know, deciding to, to meet your partner at their place of work and, and grab lunch or something like that, or, you know, talk on the phone for a little bit or Skype if you're separated by miles or time zones. But this is basically about being creative and just getting to know one another. And this is about listening and talking. So there needs to be reciprocity when it comes to this type of um, getting to know your partner. All right, now let's take a look at your destiny card. I always like to remind folks that with the destiny card, it's not set in stone, contrary to the name. Um, destiny is something that is kind of always shifting based on our decisions. We have free will. So this is your GPS and it's showing you where you're headed. If you don't like it, shift the GPS and um, your destiny shifts accordingly. So we have a really cool fiery card for you, which is um, appropriate. It says the fire prince and two different opposing forces this month. The first one's really good. It's about optimism. And that, that feeds into that reimagine that I channeled at the beginning. The second one is aggression. So aggression in and of itself, I mean, it's not a bad thing. It's a very sort of masculine energy and this card is very masculine. <clears throat> but what I would say instead of I would use assertive instead of aggressive. So that's your challenge this month is how to assert and to communicate your needs without coming across as being aggressive, overbearing, or too much. Um, so if you do that, I think you're going to be able to accomplish your goals. And if not, then it's going to be a little bit trickier and you could run into some of the snags that you would normally expect in a retrograde period. So let's summarize everything and uh, hopefully give you the clarity that you need. Channeled information this month is to think outside of the box, way outside of the box, and reimagine a new version of yourself. When we look at your um, Catalyst card, it's really saying ground yourself and reach out into your network. 
I mentioned a couple times this really applies to your finance, but it's also about support. So if you're feeling overwhelmed in any way, know that you are strong and you have a really strong support network. You're also very resilient. Um, I love the image of the tree, tree of life. Also think of trees going through cycles in their life. Sometimes it looks like everything is lost. They lose all of their leaves. But every year, there's a, you know, this sort of sequence of um, buds, blossoms, leaves, beautiful period of taking things in and then loss. So just know that you're in, you're in a cyclical period of your life and that whatever happens will not define you. It's one season of your soul. Okay, so the question is what season of your soul are you in? Um, this one actually looks like it's, you know, it's in the warming up phase and getting ready to grow. Okay, you put in the work, you have the, the stability, so allow yourself to blossom and feel um, all the beautiful light that's around you. Okay, as we look at the, again, just to review the overarching energy of the month, you've got some decisions to make. Take the first step. Don't, don't panic too much. All my cards this month have numbers on them, so that kind of helps. So, you know, you're going to have to make some decisions around the 8th. This grounding and this, this sort of sitting and thinking, I'm okay, and this is, like I said, a season of my soul. This is going to come through around the, the week of the 20th for you. Um, when we're looking at your, your health challenges or opportunities, um, again, that was around the 8th. When we're looking at the wealth stuff, it's around the 16th. Remembering that you're going to need to seek out um, assistance and advice. And then we're looking at love. It these this these cards really don't have numbers that apply to um, specific days, but I would say it's around the third or fourth week because of where the Queen of Cups was. So remembering to, um, to spend time getting to know your partner and to make time to be with them, really important. And try not to be overpowering when it comes with your own energy. While at the same time, I want you to be optimistic. Um, as we look at everything this month. Remembering that you might have a couple of really strong personalities in your life. I want you to just be happy and content with who you are without letting either that overarching control freak in your life or the sort of more self-centered person take away from your shine. Um, I'm encouraging you to come out of your shell once you've made a decision on what you want to focus on. Spiritual growth, really great this month, so don't be afraid to meditate, pray, or engage in any sort of um, activities that help you feel more centered and connected to God and the universe. Um, you're going to have a lot of support this month, but it's not going to be overt. You might have to ask for it. And, you know, a lot of people are going to be asking you to hang out with them. There's a lot of social activities. I would say go to a few of them. You don't have to do everything, but you could meet a great um, water sign this month, a Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. So, you know, you might be missing out on that if you don't do it. Um, as we said with money, going to have to be creative and think outside of the box. So that's all the information that came through for you for this month. If you'd ever like more personalized information or have specific questions, um, I do offer one-on-ones. So I'll post the link in the video. And for those of you on the mobile, you think you just tap on the letter I, it's in a circle. Same thing on the desktop and you'll get some uh, links there within the video. So another way to stay in touch is to subscribe to the channel. And um, I also have a newsletter. Both of those are great because the minute videos are posted, you should get some sort of a notification of that. You can also join me, however, on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. I'm pretty active on those and a um, great way to see what's going on, ask questions, etc. Otherwise, I just want to say thank you guys so much for your support from month to month. It really makes a difference um, to see the likes, the subscribes, and for those of you that have been kind enough to to also donate and support the channel. Thank you for doing that. Um, there's also a link at the end, but that's optional. Um, so take care of yourselves. Have a great month. Focus on the opportunities this month, not on the restrictions. Um, and the opportunities really are with love relationships and for you to kind of come out of your shell and, and define a new version of yourself, if you will. Okay? So take care of yourselves. Wishing you much love and growth. Um, Satnam and take care. Bye-bye.